everyone. Uh, please welcome Amélie Bourgeois Dag, the Direct Marketing and Internet Director of Disneyland Paris. Jean-Robert Belanger, Digital Marketing Manager from Red Bull France, and Tanguy Favenek, Marketing Director from Air France. So, have a seat. So, uh, I'm, I'm going to walk around, so that's normal. So, thanks a lot to be there, and uh, I think, you know, everybody's talking about social media, Facebook, Twitter, and everything, but, you know, in the end, we can open as many, I would say, social media territory we want, in the end, it's what do we do with it that counts. So how do we measure it? What is the objective? What, uh, and finally, what do we want to say? And I think content is an, another issue. So uh, today, uh, I think we are going to try to see if finally the future of social media is more brand content or social CRM. And uh, I will let uh, Jean-Robert Bélanger uh, try to uh, answer this question, but maybe before so people better understand uh, you know, what you do at Red Bull, I'll show you a, a small video. Are you okay with that, Jean-Robert? Yes, of course. All right, so, so let's start it. So, wow, are you a movie company, a sport company, or what, what do you do already at Red Bull? Yeah, welcome to the world of Red Bull. <laughs> um, I think this, um, this was a cinema ad campaign we were running uh, this uh, past month in France. Um, actually, I think that to answer your question um, about social media, because this, is, this, is, uh, this could be a TV ad, this could be a lot of different stuff, uh, to answer your question to, um, regarding the social media, if we want to, to succeed into social media, I think one of the most important things will be we need to be relevant and legitimate. And for instance, these images, these moving images, condenses what we are doing all year long to be legitimate and relevant. Why? Because we do have real athletes, we do organize real events. And we are not just uh, like a, a buzz company. We are not just working around the buzz. But you do generate a lot of buzz, right? It's kind of every time we see your videos, I've seen millions of times yes, on YouTube. Yes, in fine, the, the aim is to have awareness about the brand, and especially awareness around our claim, which is Red Bull give you wings. When you see these kind of images, you want to have wings. You, our athletes have wings. But what I want to say is to be legitimate and relevant because we organize real stuff and it's not just buzz. And now, with the brand content um, fashion, I would say, uh, many people just confuse between what is brand content and brand culture. We are much more into brand culture and not brand content. So you mean your DNA as a brand is really important and everything you do is always following this? Yes, I think it's a must important thing at Red Bull is and to so keep this DNA strong. And so how are you organized to, I would say, create, spread this, uh, this content uh, at Red Bull? And even are you sponsoring those athletes all, all the year? Uh, how does it work? Yeah, we never work as a one-shot um, action. We work on the long term, long term partnership, long term sponsoring with the athletes, organizing our own events. Why? Because we want to be unique. If you want to be unique, you need to create your own content. For instance, in sports, we don't have to wait for a federation to let us, to authorize us to make something new. So we, uh, we get this authorization from ourselves to organize these proper events. The athletes, for instance, are 
um, are fully followed all year long. We have we are an energy drink company, so we are a, comp a soda company. But we do have, for instance, an athlete manager who manages athletes all year long in our office. That's really important for us. Um, for instance, on this um, on this chart, uh, this is a quick overview on, on how we communicate uh, uh, through different media channels. In the center, you have the energy drink, which is our main business today. Then after, you have, for instance, Red Bull Mobile, which is one new media channel we, we use in different, in um, uh, almost uh, eight countries, I guess, today. We have Red Bull 10, we're gonna talk about it later, which is a magazine, an iPad magazine, e-magazine, I would say. We organize sports, we have athletes, events, culture, we do, have a, we do support a lot of artists and we organize our own uh, cultural events on digital media. We are here to um, to talk about digital. So digital is very very wide, very broad. At Red Bull, we do use Facebook and Twitter, but I don't think it's only about Facebook and Twitter or digital today. We have a lot of different application um, channels, but also live webcast. We have a live uh, TV called Red Bull TV, and we can we gather and collect all this content in a one single entity called Red Bull Media House. This is a company based in Austria, um, fully dedicated to content. We content hours, thousands of hours of moving images of diff photographs, pictures, articles. We do collect all this content, this amazing and unique content in one single place called Red Bull Media House. Then after, all kind of media from all over the world can pick up these assets, these media assets, to distribute and to fill the media. For instance, in France, we have a few examples. And then, of course, the aim is to reach maximum people, but in each different core scene. We're not just a global brand. We go into different core scenes. Yeah, like what, breakdance, BMX, uh, snowboarding, skydiving, sky jumping? I would say there are really few disciplines in which okay. we are not so far. Okay, so basically instead of buying media, but you still do, you are becoming media too and, and creating content. Yeah, of course we do buy media, but maybe less than other brands of uh, the same weight, I would say. But um, we buy media, but we, we provide media assets. And we control these media assets because we do produce the whole stuff. And but now the the business model is moving forward a little bit. We are beginning selling this content too, and not paying to have it on TV. We never pay to have our editorial content on TV. Okay. Now, for instance, in France, we have one of the, one example on this chart, Directstar, which is a media channel from Boloi Group, buyers. Um, a TV program, a weekly TV program called Extreme Star. But we do also produce DVDs on cinema uh, movies. For instance, we have a big, um, um, a very huge uh, movie right now called The Art of Flight, which is in cinema right now. All right, so it seems you are definitely a lot about content, but what about Air France, Tongi? Uh, I, I know you do beautiful advertising, but I guess with all the traveling data, all the customer tickets and everything, and uh, everybody, uh, I would say, angry when there is a storm or, or anything happening or they lose their flight or it's late or I don't know. How, how, how do you manage that and, and how do you see social media at Air France? Is it more content? Is it more social media? Do you, what, what do you focus on? I think definitely it's about uh, data. Um, and I would even say service. So I will tell you about social media servicing today. Um, if you can yeah, put the sure. slide. Yeah. In fact, we consider that new technologies are there to better accompany our uh, customers along their travel experience. So for example, a customer should be able to uh, ask a question on Facebook. Um, I want to travel with my red fish. Uh, how can I do that? Um, then to book a ticket, on his mobile, uh, ask a question on Twitter, use his mobile as a boarding pass, or even after his travel, to share his travel di diary with his friends 
Um, and I hope we launch that new application uh, very soon before Christmas. Um, but it's also about listening. So um, alors, we have we have a report. We have um, a tool to monitor the buzz on Air France, and a daily report is sent uh, every day to the top management. Um, so, so I know that uh, uh, everything that I tell you today can be reported to my top management tomorrow. Um, but the real, the real issue is about uh, real time. Let me tell you what happened to Air France a few months ago, uh, just after the Fukushima explosion in Japan. Uh, actually, uh, just after this explosion, a lot of French people in, in Japan wanted to, to go back to, to France. Um, and on Saturday, a guy tweeted, uh, I want to, to bring my family back to France, uh, but Air France, you are very expensive, please help me. And of course, at that time, the flights were full, the fares were, were very expensive, uh, so it was not easy. And, and suddenly on Twitter, uh, we had two streams, First stream, um, Air France, you should help this guy. And the other stream, uh, the committee manager is not answering. What on hell is the, doing the committee manager? And at that time, um, Air France was busy to uh, find a solution to operate the flights from Japan. And the committee manager had no information. Uh, he was listening, but he did not dare to answer. So it's interesting. It, wa it was not like some people thought he was not there sleeping. He was there, but he had not, the, I would say, the means to decide himself what he can, uh, he can do. Yeah, because at that time we were not uh, very organized. Uh, there were no connection between uh, the crisis management and uh, social media. We have that now. Um, so it's really easy to say uh, afterwards what we should have done. Uh, probably we should have the, we should have uh, said uh, we're busy with the case. Uh, we are on it. We're there. We're listening to you, but we have no information. We'll tell you. Um, but at that time, we were not just not organized. So and uh, and since you now let's say you are listening definitely, and you seems to have what, what have you changed? What have you reorganized within the organization based on this case? What will you do now? What can you do now? Or how many people even uh, do you have in your team? Yeah, we have, um, let's say, a, a, a central, a, a social media hub, we call it like that. So it's a, a team, a, a transversal team with uh, public relations, uh, marketing, commercial, and even stations now. Um, but it works as a hub between uh, customers and internal staff. And now, when there is a crisis, uh, one representative of this team is in the, uh, the team managing the crisis. Okay, so that's really interesting. You kind of destroy the silo and integrate a different type of, uh, of knowledge and expertise within your own team to be more reactive. Yeah, exactly. It's, um, it's easy to say uh, what we should do. Actually, it took us uh, some time. Uh, I hope if we have uh, another crisis, we will manage. Okay, so we'll see. Thank you for, for sharing. Uh, Amelie, uh, Disney, I think it's interesting because on one hand we feel there is probably a lot of content. We, even if it's a park, we always think about the movie and the cartoons and, and even the characters there. But I guess you're selling tickets too, so you have a lot of data. So for you, you know, how do you see social media? How active are you on, on Facebook? What do you do? Are you more analyzing data, creating content? Well, from, from our experience, uh, content should come first and um, data should help optimize your content. So the good combination should be that. I'm not saying we're there, but we're trying to get we there. We're working on it. Yes. Uh, content is first because social media marketing is about creating or participating to conversation that happen online. And if there's nothing to talk about or nothing to share, then the, the conversation dies out pretty quickly. So we're lucky enough at Disneyland Paris to have both, to combine both the Disney universe, as you were saying, which carries the characters, the storytelling, etc. So there is content to be shared. 
and the experience of the park, so pe what people uh, experience when they come to the park. So, uh, and this is social. I mean, they come as a family, they come as friends, and, and they, they experience it together, and they want to share afterwards. So yeah, you are creating content, emotions, therefore people want to share it. Yes, content is there. It's, it's even overwhelming. I mean, when you see what's being talked about on social media by our brand, it's, it's really overwhelming. So, so that's interesting. <laughs> if you have a lot of engagement, how do you do scale? How do you manage if you have a piece? of too many people as asking you question or reacting how do you manage that do you have tools or well we yeah we, we're testing and learning as we're working <laughs> as many brands I guess um, we're again lucky enough to have very positive content to to respond to and what we observe is that the community itself whether the fans community not the Facebook fans but the brand fans community um, our community manager themselves. So there are conversations happening without us being involved, which so is great. The super fans are helping you. Yes, and, uh, and they usually convey the right message. And it's funny to see some of the observations they're making, saying that answering questions that are being asked online and saying, wow, I, I should be a Disney employee. And we're like, no, 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 please stay <laughs> outside. Your, your answer is much, much more valuable than now that you're outside. So it's, it's interesting to, to see this movement. But to, to answer your question, um, I mean, the beauty of social media marketing is that you have, again, overwhelming data. You can learn a lot on your product, the experience you deliver, uh, the communication plan you're, you're putting in place. So you have to get organized to, to, uh, to learn from that and improve your content from that. Um, so it's, it, this, this is a difficult part. <laughs> how, many, how many fans are fa on Facebook for Disneyland Paris? Um, almost 1.4 million. Okay. So you know, you know each of them? Oh yeah, sure. No, <laughs> we'd love to. <laughs> so uh, I want to show a small uh, uh, action you did, a small campaign uh, uh, with a personalized Facebook. Can, can you uh, give yeah. us two words before I show it? That, that was about a year and a half ago um, for the, the launch of a celebration uh, called the New Generation Festival, where we mixed Pixar characters and old Disney characters. And what we had learned, again, relying on data, that we, we opened um, Facebook pages for Disney characters a few weeks before. And we, from the level of engagement, we saw that there was quite of an, an appetite around that. So we created content to be shared online around um, Pixar characters are coming and invading your Facebook page and the Facebook pages of your friends. So this is something we learned from our data again. So le let's have a look. So it was on your website and you can Facebook connect to, uh, to the system. Can break through walls, they just can't. What? You knocked down a building? Hey, come on. We're superheroes. What could happen? We need to find a better outlet. A more constructive outlet. Thanks, but I don't need any help. I will not be made the enemy here. You know why we can't do that! Uh-oh. -uh. I was wrong to treat you that way. I'm sorry. Officers, ma'am, squeaker. I need you to intervene! This is gonna be rough! Ooh. No, Bob, that's bad. Oh, great. Now you just stay here. They usually pick up the garbage in an hour. Mr. Incredible, I love you. Yeah, baby! Woo <laughs> mm. You need an invitation? Are you doing anything later? I have a previous engagement. Oh, I, I love, love you. And then, of course, you can send it to your friends. So it's uh, interesting because here it's about content, but personalized content and experience, emotion. And I guess at the same time, you are gathering contacts and data, too. We're trying. This is not where we're most successful. But we're trying, indeed, to have um, our Facebook and social media actions feed into our CRM database. Oh. And we have a lot to learn oh. on that so because we're at the very beginning. One figure to share about this campaign with us? A million views uh, in a yeah. few weeks. Uh, Yes, yeah, that's pretty impressive. Like out of 1.4 million uh, fans, that's uh, that's pretty big. All right. Uh, so I think um, we kind of seen that we can go both for content, 
majorly or data or, or a little bit of both, but uh, you know, I think there's a lot of people listening to us today. You are already experimenting a lot. I, I like the humble way you do it, and I think you know that's the only way to do on social media because you can always learn, or you will al always learn with new situation. But since they don't have much time, and we need to bring value, what what will you share? One advice you will share with them today. What what will be the win? For example, at Disney, what would you really teach people wanting to do social media for their brand? Um, one advice, again, as you were saying, there's no universal recipe, otherwise <laughs> we would all be rich writing but books. Maybe you have a few good it. ingredients. <laughs> uh, so you have to test and learn a lot, even when you have a big brand, etc. You, you have to find the right use of social media for the right objectives, and that takes time, because yeah. at first when you start, you want to fool around with it, and it's very fun. <laughs> so you start to tackle all objectives at the same time, business, advocacy, data collection, etc., and you have to focus, really. The, the, the advice I would give is that to the, the we talk about the, we talk a lot about the value of social media where where it is to find etc. To me, the value is to be found in the long term, and this is something we've learned over the past years that we were tempted to do campaigns and to try to see the effectiveness right away, and we don't see it, <laughs> or it's more hidden than we think. So, again, we're, we're going to talk about old CRM here, but it's um, the value of. We're talking about br brand value and how, how you engage with your customers, with your target, is something that uh, the effect of which are to be seen in the long term. So again, as I was saying, combining content, data, learning from data to feed into your content is probably the right way to, to create value in the longer term. Then uh, second thing and the last one, um, the, the value is probably to be found not only within the social media world, but beyond that. So combining, as usual, social media, as Redbird is doing, social media and the rest of the digital world, uh, online and offline, virtual and real world, which is something that we are lucky enough to be doing. So again, um, we're trying to find value there. How can social media help me get to my objectives and to my KPI? So how can they uh, increase uh, the value of what I'm doing uh, anywhere else? So I think it's interesting, the three top like brands you, you, uh, and strategy, it seems every time you might be doing things online and on social media, but finally there is real athletes behind, there is real problems, which is real traveler, or you have like a real emotion. So it seems finally it's not that virtual. And it's just like an extension of a, a true, real uh, uh, situation. But you were saying experimenting, so it means taking risk at Disney. Is your uh, <laughs> low legal department okay with that? Um, well, at some stage, again, it becomes just overwhelming. Your, your target, your consumers are there, so you just you would just be foolish not to not to be there either. So at some point, yeah, it gets obvious. Okay, uh, I think there's another campaign uh, that once again kind of really show how you can mix emotion and uh, and, and uh, online. Uh, uh, I show this small video, so can, uh, can you introduce yeah. it? It, it? It shows how social media in general and the fact that people are sharing their experience, etc., is totally changing the way we communicate. And this is something we've been observing already. This is a campaign that we launched a few months ago um, uh, about, again, a celebration called the Magical Moments Festival. And this is real people uh, and real emotions shown on our TV campaign. So let's have a look. In Paris. So how did you uh, uh, get people involved, uh, like normal people involved in this uh, campaign? We helped them a bit. Yeah? <laughs> These so are you, real pay, people. you pay the kids to be happy? No, or? no, no. <laughs> they don't. The kids didn't know, of course, the parents yeah. didn't. Uh, no, I, I think it was great because finally it shows too that sometimes it's not about making, okay, nice production like this one, but that it's about being genuine and maybe, I would say, loyal to his brand DNA, like uh, it was said for, for Red Bull uh, uh, before. 
Um, Tungi, what, what, what have you learned outside of that uh, <coughs> you need to give your community manager enough knowledge or uh, rights to, to be able to deal better with real time? Yeah, I would say um, first, uh, what, uh, what is important, I think, is, is to learn by doing. Because, uh, you know, for, for airlines, it's not something very uh, natural. Um, I would say social media is, is complex. The, the real issue is to make it work, to make it happen, uh, especially in big organizations. Um, you know, we are very comfortable with uh, centralized, controlled, uh, descending communication. Um, and it's very consistent with our uh, DNA. Uh, when you enter an aircraft, you are not asked, uh, Emmanuel, uh, on which city would, would you like to fly? Uh, no, piloting an aircraft is not a democratic process. Yeah, let's, be, let's make a vote. You, you should launch a user-decided uh, tri trip. You don't know where you go. And, uh, yeah, you <laughs> what would be your destination, for example? Um, no, so, so introducing uh, social media was really uh, difficult. It was a, a, a shock. Um, I think even two years ago, it, we thought it would never be possible. Um, just one thing, huh? um, I think that if customer had not called us on social media, we would never have gone uh, to too many problems, too many problems. So, uh, bon, but the thing is that the relationship between customers and companies is changing. And, well, we cannot deny that. Uh, so, the good news is that customers know better than us what to expect from social media. Uh, so we, we thought at the beginning that uh, inspirational content uh, would, be, uh, would be great, etc. But when we opened the Facebook page and the Twitter account, people started to ask us some questions. Uh, I want to travel with my bicycle, or I'm blocked in Casablanca, or uh, uh, have you got promotions to New York, things like that. Um, and then we understood that social media servicing would be the first issue to tackle. Okay, and uh, that's pretty interesting. You know, very often when I speak with brands, a social media manager might be 22 years old. How long have you been uh, with, uh, with the company at Air France? Yeah, uh, 15 years. So that's a good question. How do you manage this when you are 40? Um, <laughs> no. That was not what I was pointing, but I think it's interesting to take someone that knows the culture of the, of the company. Yeah, to be frank, two years ago, um, my teams told me, uh, you know, um, we should go on social media because we have to, uh, to open the dialogue with our customers, we have to... Uh, to engage, uh, we have to create ambassadors. Uh, I did not understand anything. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean, uh, making them loyal? Uh, well, they had a very hard time to convince me. Uh, they succeeded. Uh, but probably now, I, I'm their best ambassador. <laughs> because you're really convinced. So I guess at least it's not a fashion or a trend. You don't know what is the value or the interest of, of social media for you. You know, I don't know if in uh, five years or uh, ten years, uh, Twitter or Facebook will uh, still exist. Um, I'm deeply convinced that the, the hot relationship between a customer and the brand will, will go on. So whatever the tools, the trend is there for, uh, for, for long? Yeah, I think so, because uh, we, we go more and more towards self-service, but... Um, how to keep the human touch somewhere. Okay, and uh, Jean-Robert, lots of amazing uh, uh, videos, but uh, you know, I'm a bit curious. Uh, any, anything about budget? Like, uh, uh, it, it looks like pretty huge. On the other hand, you're, it seems you are not paying agency, you, you do everything internally, but uh, how do you manage this uh, media, media house? And, and where did you start at first, uh, anyway? Hello. Uh, yeah. Uh, first of all, we never talk about budget. 
<laughs> but after, it's just okay. a question of scale, actually. If you were an independent company just um, wondering about making your own event, it would cost us a lot because you will be obliged to hire an other independent company to make the logistics, to find the athletes, whatever. We do have the athletes, we do support uh, around 650 different athletes in the world okay. in all kinds of disciplines from Formula One to skateboarding to from skydiving to scuba diving. <laughs> so we do have the athletes, it costs money for sure, but we do support them all year long. So that's another kind of scale. We organize internally the events with external logistic agency for sure, but we do do the, the main, the whole stuff internally. So we do have all kind of processes. We, we know how to handle it. And, and so for instance, and, on this uh, slide, you see few few events we did in France uh, this year. I'm not gonna start uh, going into details, uh, otherwise we, c we could spend like hours uh, or but, days. But, but just so people uh, uh, understand, uh, I think what is great is that you nearly invented some sports or some type of event that were not even available, I would say. Yes, normally. exactly, as I told you previously. I think if you want to go forward into the, the sports or culture, because we are much more seen into sports today, but we have a big, big scale of action into culture with dance. music, yeah. music and dance uh, especially. But um, if you want to go forward, you don't have to wait from federation, from sportive or cultural federation, from the, the minister of culture to, to have the authorization to make this or that. You, you take and you go forward and you invent. And when you are the brand, you can invent that the wall, the wall communication around it with old school media, sorry, and digital media. And um, one of, I think, the, the most powerful thing today regarding digital action is uh, that cont uh, local content matters a lot. There's two past days at Le Web, I heard so many times during the, the keynotes, during uh, different conferences that local content matters. But that's totally true. That's the reason why at Red Bull we do support local athletes. In each country we are involved too, we do support local athletes, we do organize our own events, we do set up our own application, our own uh, digital media channels. For instance, if you can, the fourth one, yeah. the iPad one. Oops, sorry, this one? No. Uh, we had a fourth one. Uh, that we had at the beginning of the presentation? Mm, I don't know. I think I, I don't know. Okay, so we don't have it, but Sorry. I'm gonna just speak a little bit about it. Uh, our last action in France about digital was the oh, release. Sorry. This Excuse one, me. yeah. This is um, the Red Bull team, so this is a, a paper magazine uh, combined with a digital application called uh, the Red Bull 10 uh, application. Uh, so we released this uh, first magazine uh, last month in, um, in, uh, with L'Equipe with okay. in France, which is uh, the biggest weekly, ma uh, the biggest uh, daily newspaper in France. So we release once a month this magazine to 300,000 copies. And we have also, we have um, built a proper application the application is free, and all issues of the magazine are free to download too. And it's a really, am it's a really amazing uh, application because we didn't come from the paper magazine to adapt it to the iPad, but we just built it for the iPad. And I warmly incite you to download this application because you're gonna see that there is a new step into uh, what um, a magazine should be or could be on the iPad. And we, have, uh, we are very excited with this application because this is the first um, application available in French in the newsstand. So we are, we are not a, a magazine uh, at the beginning. We are still uh, an um, energy drink company. But we have been the first company to launch an, a magazine on iPad fully in French in France. All right, so Amélie, Jean-Robert, Tanguy, thanks uh, a lot for sharing uh, some of, uh, I would say, your daily work, challenges, and uh, insights. I think you can see that even big brands 
are, let's say, experimenting uh, uh, all the time. But I think what we can see here behind everything is bringing, it's no more about messages or like top-down messages. It's really about bringing value, creating service, creating uh, 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 content and maybe more experience even than, than, than content that relate to each people, uh, uh, to families or, or to, uh, uh, I would say, local audience uh, uh, at Redville. And I think it's really sweet, inspiring uh, uh, example that you gave us today. Yeah, thank you. Yes, we try, we do our best to make uh, and to, to bring the best and the premium quality content to everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Manuel.